Hello, my name is Patrick Caffarel. I am a distinguished engineer at Lenovo and the PMCI co-chair within DMTF. Today, I will provide a technology overview of the PMCI working group within DMTF. A quick disclaimer, the information in this presentation represents a snapshot of work within the DMTF. This information is subject to change. Please see the DMTF website for latest information. The goals of this presentation is to provide an overview of PMCI technology and standards. In addition, we'll discuss the management challenges addressed by these PMCI technologies. PMCI Working Group is short for Platform Management Communications Infrastructure. And this group provides a suite of standards which provide inside the box communication and functional interfaces between components of a platform management subsystem. Some of these components would be management controllers, network devices, managed devices. Formed initially in 2005, the first standards released by PMCI were in 2007. That re represents well over a decade of implementations within server and desktop products. PMCI technologies and interfaces are also complementary to other DMTF external facing protocols such as Redfish. PMCI provides a scalable architecture for modern platforms. A representation of a platform management subsystem is shown on this chart. In the middle is a management controller and surrounding it are various technologies, interfaces and protocols. The management controller may need to communicate to managed devices, network controllers, or even other management controllers. PMCI provides those protocols and interfaces that allow you to do that. In addition, on the right side, there are other standards from DMTF, such as Redfish that may be used. And PMCI also offers a test tool interface and design to allow for validation of this capability. On this chart, the PMCI stack is shown. This can be broken into three main areas. The lowest layer is the physical layer. In the middle, there's a transport layer, and at the top, there's the upper layer. As you can see, the various PMCI protocol and technologies can be run across a variety of different physical layer mediums. That could be RMI-based transport or RBT, PCI Express VDM, SM Bus I2C, I3C, or other host interfaces. The transport layer consists of either RMI-based transport or MCTP. And at the upper layer, there is a variety of different standards that are available both from within DMTF, as well as external organizations that have binding specifications that can operate their messaging layer over MCTP. So as you can see, PLDM and its variety of message types, along with MCTP and all of its messages types, can be used. Now, MCTP is known as Management Component Transport Protocol, and this is a suitable transport for inside the box communication and can be used over multiple media types. This supports logical addressing based on endpoint IDs and provides message fragmentation and reassembly. It can carry multiple message types from PLDM, NCSI, MVMEMI, SPDM, and even CXL based management methods can be used. MCTP based specification is described in DSP 236. The network controller sideband interface, otherwise known as NCSI, is a common interoperable sideband protocol, and it can be used to transfer management traffic between a management controller and a network controller. You can use either MCTP or RBT transport to do this. The NCSI communication also supports pass-through management traffic, where external Ethernet communication from your network may need to be routed to the management controller, and that can be done using NCSI. And there is a variety of packets, including command, response, and notification packets defined. This is all defined in the NCSI-based specification DSP-222. The RMII-based transport, or RVT, is what NCSI can be binded to. Now, this is a physical level interface and also provides a transport function, and it is run over 
the reduced media independent interface. There are some differences from RMII, and that is described in DSP 222, and why the title is RMI based transport, otherwise known as RBT. This also defines a hardware arbitration scheme where you can share a single RMI based NCSI bus to provide two or more NCSI packages from transmitting at the same time. Platform level data model, also known as PLDM, is an effective interface and data model for access to low level platform inventory, BIOS and config data, platform monitor and control, such as the ability to collect data from sensors along with alerts, the ability to do firmware update, and Redfish device enablement for managed devices, also known as RDE. All of this is provided by a transport independent request response model, and there is a NIC model reference available as well. There are a variety of different PLDM subtypes to distinguish the types of PLDM messages. All of this is described in DSP 240. PMCI test tools is a document that defines messages, data objects, and sequences for testing implementations. You can use this data to assess the conformance of a device vendor firmware. It defines roles for both a test service and a test client, and the test service runs in the platform subsystem control plane, while the test client runs external to the platform subsystem and connects securely to the test service via TLS. This PMCI test tools interface and design specification is described in DSP 280. So in summary, PMCI provides a significant number of interfaces and protocols using inside the box communication between components of a platform management subsystem. These interfaces are also complementary to external facing data models from DMTF, such as Redfish. And the main standards from PMCI include MCTP, NCSI, and PLDM. And lastly, the PMCI test tools provides the ability to assess PMCI conformance of a device vendor firmware. Thank you for listening to this and learning more about PMCI. If you want to know even more, please visit us at www.dmtf.org slash standards slash PMCI.